kind of two parts to today. Uh, one is I want to start prepping you in terms of being able to uh, get ready for the pitch. Um, so at this stage, you know, last night you uh, interviewed problem sponsors. And, uh, you know, some of you asked a few questions. Some of you asked a lot of questions. Uh, if you don't feel like you got enough, you can still reach out to your problem sponsor. Um, and ideally, you're, you're going to continue to do that because it should be more of like a relationship back and forth, uh, asking questions. Um, but I want to get you a sense of what the slide deck should look like based off of the information that you'll be having over the next couple of days. So if I'm doing this slide, I'm just going to have a team intro slide. So my team name and just like a super short tagline, like three or four uh, words, super basic. Uh, the next one is going to be your problem slide. So this is me defining what the problem is. This could be two, two slides. So it could be, here's what current contractors are doing for XYZ, you know, just for context. Uh, so if you don't feel like the average person would understand the problem to begin with, I would advise like setting up your problem slide with context, and then it would roll to problem slide number two, which would describe like, and this is why it's a problem. So uh, for example, I listened to the, uh, the, the guy, um, Altours Homes was explaining, um, last night he was explaining, okay, when people, when they have excavators on a property, they dig up all this dirt and they have to move it. And then eventually they have to move it back, right? So that's kind of the status quo. I'd have a second, so I, I'm establishing that. And then my second slide would be, here's why this is bad. Because every home, all tourist homes is spending anywhere from three to, up to upwards of $10,000 moving dirt back and forth. And they think it's the biggest variable cost on their, on their uh, like per home. And they're looking to reduce that cost. Does that make sense? So I'm, sometimes it needs context. If it doesn't need context, you can go straight into like, here's the, here's the exact problem. We talked about last night as well. The best problems will actually have numbers. So notice I said like, it's the biggest variable home, it's or big, biggest variable cost. It's three to 10,000. Those are measurable. If you just say like, you know, oh, it's really hard or they don't, really don't like it or, or it's kind of vague, uh, you're, you're not really being specific. Okay, so then the next one is uh, you're introducing what your service or product is. So this is just like, so I immediately know what it is. So sometimes people jump straight to like, uh, and we're a service company and our benefits are X, Y, Z. This is not quite the benefits section yet. This is just like what I actually do. So going back to the example of people moving back and forth, whatever my initial solution is, whether it's a software, whether it's a training, whether it's whatever, I would say, you know, here is what my service does. And then your next slide is, here's how my service or product or whatever it is actually solves the problem. So it's kind of a bridge. So I will use like a crude example. So uh, I personally am a little, uh, little on the heavy side. So I could say, uh, you know, I'm looking to lose weight. Uh, so that'd be the problem, right? Like I'm, lose, I'm looking to lose 15 pounds. My solution is a pill. My pill helps people lose 15 pounds or more, right? So you're just kind of doing this bridge so I know what you are and, and how it solves the problem. So that's all from tonight. That's all. Uh, you should start getting your, in your mindset that you should be able to have that. Um, I'll drop in the link tonight before I leave. Um, you guys are welcome to schedule one-on-ones. It'll be, usually we do like quick 15 minute sessions. We can do pitch practice. We can, I can just be more of like a sounding board if you have questions or ideas or struggles with this competition. Um, but definitely like the best teams are the ones that have like dialed in pitches because they actually did something and got like actual data and started making progress. Before moving on, any questions regarding these initial three slides plus a title slide? Any, any, anything I can help clarify on? My last tip on this is do not clog this with words. Uh, the, on the problem slide, that literally could be a full page picture. So if you guys are the ones that are talking about like, you know, 90% of the trash could be recyclable, but they're just dumping it in a bin, then literally you could just show me what one of those bins look like full of trash. You don't need to like clutter it with a lot of words. So remember this is a three to four minute pitch and some of your judges don't know this space very well. They're more like just general, like just you know, great business people here in the Valley, but they're not home builders. So there's a blend. So you got to speak to both, both judges. Otherwise you're going to like confuse them or make it too complicated. If you have specific questions, uh, like I said, uh, feel free to reach out after I put the, the link on. All right, let's move on to MVPs tonight. So MVPs is a minimal viable product. This is essentially the end goal. So if, if we're talking about like, 
kind of what, what you should be shooting for for this competition. It, it is to launch like a first version of MVP. So uh, to go over that, it's super minimum. Uh, it's viable, meaning like it's actually something you can, you can give to someone. Uh, and then it's a, either a product or service that you're testing. So it's like on the smallest scale of testing your idea. So here's the concept behind MVPs and where uh, almost all entrepreneurs, even if they're trying to build an MVP, gets it wrong. So most people, like all of us that are entrepreneurs always dream of like the car, right? Like we want, like that's our baby. That's our dream vision. So maybe you're talking to these home builders and you have this amazing idea of like this potential product or service. Or like, I know one of the problems was, uh, you know, a, a new way to frame or have hybrid, hy you know, a hybrid wood product. Let's be real. You're not going to crank that out in a week. So what you've got to do is say like, okay, the end goal of like a hybrid wood product is, is my car, but to test it, I'm going to build something super, super small. It might be crude, but it's going to test it. And this is how you do it. So if on this bottom charts, how, how true MVPs are done. All we're asking for for this competition is you're building a freaking scooter. That's all. Meaning like you're going to have a small improvement on the status quo to prove the concept so that if the if the judges like it or the, or more importantly, our industry partners like it, then they'll double down and they'll be like, hey, keep building it because we, we like this. It's improving what, what's going on. So, for example, uh, the problem statement about legacy knowledge, right? Like there's tribal knowledge and it's hard to pass on. And there's all these young folks that like to do videos, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm not asking you to solve that entire problem. I'm saying have an idea that might solve the problem, but like actually produce something within a week that they could test to say, did this help pass tribal knowledge better than what we're currently doing? That's all we're looking for. Okay, so uh, let's explore a couple examples. So we have like really high level examples of MVPs. Um, so Zappos, right? So uh, Zappos is kind of like the Amazon for shoes. They are super famous in terms of an MVP. So think of think. So take a second. If you were going to, this is back in like 1995, right? So like barely internet's coming uh, coming around. It's kind of pre huge Amazon. You want to build essentially the Amazon of shoes. Think like how much money would I need to launch Zappos day one? How much time would I need? How many like would I need a warehouse? Would I need two warehouses? Think of how many shoe pair of shoes you would need so that you could like say day one, okay, I'm launching. All right, so for all of you that thought, well, I'm gonna need to have a warehouse with at least a thousand pair of shoes and da 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 da, you're like here, okay? This is, you're way too far down the track. You, what that means is you've spent way too much time and money into a concept that's unproven. And so uh, Zappos got that concept and, and all he did, the founder, he went down and took his cell phone and took pictures of shoes in these local local New York boutiques and put those pictures online. And if someone bought it, guess what he did? He hauled his ass down to the, the store and just bought the shoes and, and then shipped them off. That's an MVP. That was the start of that was the start of Zappos, which turned out to be like a billion dollar shoe company. So all but but the concept, while it's clunky, while it's super manual, while that part part is not scalable, that is not the point. You're not trying to test scalability. You're just trying to test did I improve the status quo? So he had this theory that people would be interested in buying shoes online versus especially people that didn't have access to all these cool boutiques in New York. And so his test was, okay, I'm going to put it up online. Who cares how he got it done? Just the fact was he got it done and improved the status quo. Okay. Another example, uh, an MVP to gauge interest. So we had a venture college student uh, that, that wanted to do service trips to Belize so her idea was to bring all these students down instead of like hitting the beach the whole time, they're actually going to build schools and do all this like good quality stuff. Right. And so same thing, if you were going to, if you're like thinking of the car or the motorcycle, you're like, well, I got to buy plane tickets and I have to have partners down there and I have to have curriculum and da da da. And so you would have spent six months to a year just building this up without even knowing if you were going to get a single customer. So all she did was the reverse. And she went to two schools, I think it was Bishop Kelly and another one, floated the idea to parents. Uh, they kind of gave her like a talking platform. She handed out flyers. She spent 20 bucks at Kinko's to do, do, do flyers. And all of a sudden she had like 20 deposits from parents. She had nothing except for a flyer. That was the MVP to gauge interest. She knew based on that, that, that there was enough interest to proceed. And that's a great problem to have as an entrepreneur is like, holy crap, they actually do like this stuff. Let's hit the gas and let me let me hurry up and get this in production. So we did something similar on our end. Like I'll be honest, MVPs are really tough. Um, 
uh, just because like you always feel like you have to over overbuild it. So I finally, uh, this was like the one I finally felt like we got right. So I have my own software company. Uh, we help businesses respond. I've, initially it was just respond to reviews, but now it goes everything from social media to customer to care tickets, all that stuff. Anyways, uh, so this is early at, the, early at the stage. We were just showing reviews and we got the feedback. No, we want to be able to respond to reviews. So we had customers said, I want to be able to hit reply, but we didn't know if there was enough to make it worth it. Normally, big picture, I'd have to build APIs. I'd have to build all these automated scrapers. Like it was going to be a six to 12 month debt process for my customers to be able to hit reply on my software and then be able to post that publicly. Okay. So my MVP was, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put a reply button on the software when they hit reply and they type their message and they hit send. Instead of us trying to automatically post it, it's going to send that email to our customer care team. And our customer care team is quickly going to go out and post and manually type that review, copy paste it, and then post it manually on Google or TripAdvisor or whatever. Super ghetto, super manual process. But what happened within two weeks, I had enough data that says, oh yeah, this is like one of our biggest features and tools. Now we can put the dev work into it. So same thing, you're just looking for like manual quick ways to see, are people gonna use it? Do people like it? And so the quicker you can get that out, the better, especially in this competition, like the teams that are gonna win, my guess, my assumption are the ones that actually have something that they can deliver to their partners by Monday. Meaning like you can have a couple days worth of testing to say, here, we, we came up with something, either give us your feedback, but best case, here we came up with something, we want your users to use it for like two or three days and then give us feedback. Okay, so uh, yeah, think, think real quick on what would be your MVP. So I like using like just lots of different examples just so you can kind of get the concept of it. So uh, we got, let's say uh, I wanna do this high scale restaurant, right? This is, my, this is my end goal. I want this little you know, classy restaurant. What would be my MVP? You know, and some people think, well, well, we'll just get, instead of a thousand square feet, we'll get 200 square feet. That's still too much too much risk, too much money without being unproven. The best way to do it, do some like little ghetto shack or some easy way that you can sell your food on the street without being location specific. That's exactly what uh, J-Dogs did. So they were in Provo and J-Dogs had this like just little, little shack that they built. And he had these like amazing hot dogs that had really, really long lines. And eventually J-Dogs turned into a formal franchise uh, down in Utah where they have really awesome locations. But it all started with just a shack, which was low, really quick to spin up and low risk. Okay, so same thing on this example. So if I was uh, if I was interested in helping farmers have better analytics, you know, for their crops so they can grow faster, there's a lot of companies in the space now, and a lot of them are using drone technology or satellite technology to take photos of the of the crops. And uh, then from there, you know, plug it into your algorithms and create this really cool looking dashboard. Okay. So take a second. If you were that company, you wanted to launch this to, like today, uh, we want to be, uh, and let's say you're going to pick a drone. What would be your MVP? What would be the first thing that you could build to test? Like, is there interest and are we moving the needle? Okay. So the right answer, the, a good answer, I want to say the right answer, a right answer would be you would mock out what a dashboard would look like. No code. You literally would just use a, a tool like Figma or freaking paint on, on the computer. And you would just sketch out what data you would present to farmers. And you'd want validation of if I gave you this data, does this improve the status quo? What would you do with this data? How would you use it? So if I got validation on there, then I can move forward. So for some of you, this might be your MVP coming out of here is a sketch of what the dashboard would look like. It doesn't have to be a full functioning dashboard. It doesn't need to be because what if the, what if the farmer comes back and says, actually, I don't need X, Y, and Z charts. And this is really confusing, but I do like this. And so you start digging in. Well, why do you like this? How would you use this? What other data would you like to see on here? Then you start to get a feedback of what they're actually wanting. And then once you get validation and you get like an approved mock-up, then it's time to build. Uh, and, and you can kind of grow the company that way. Okay, last thing I want to uh, measure on or talk about today is how to measure an MVP. Um, this is a formal tool we use at Venture College. Uh, it's part of the, um, it's called a, a test card. And um, let's just watch the video real quick. Here, I'm going to stop sharing. So well, let's watch this real quick and then I'll, I'll review it.
So let's discover the test card together. This is a tool that allows you to describe how you're going to test the hypothesis. So let's look at example together. Let's give this test a course. We're going to call it pricing the value proposition design course and we're going to assign it to Natasha who basically does the testing and the data at our company. But let's move to the first block here, the hypothesis. Here you describe one thing that has to be true for your idea to work and you're going to select one hypothesis among the many that you have to test your ideas. So let's fill this out for our example. Let's take, take a, a specific case here. We said, we believe that people are willing to pay $500 for a self-service value proposition design course. This is a hypothesis that we had that we wanted to test before designing, before filming the course. And here we have one more thing. We describe if this is a critical test or not. In this case, before we actually tested the pricing, we of course tested if people even wanted the course. Now let's move to the next block here, the test itself. So we're going to describe here what we're going to verify, what we're going to test. In our case, we said to verify that we will simulate the sales of the online course on our website. That was a test we're going to perform. And here we have to describe, of course, how much this test costs. Let's circle that in our case. And we have to describe how reliable the data is. Let's circle that for this case. If you talk to people, it's kind of a test, but the data is not really reliable because you know that people don't always do what they say. But here we're simulating a purchasing uh, situation. So the data is pretty reliable if that will really correspond to the reality later on in the future. Okay, now let's move to the next thing here. What are we going to measure? So in our case, we said we're going to measure how many of the visitors who come to the website will actually convert. So that was the, the particular measure that we looked at to validate or invalidate our hypothesis. And now let's move to the last thing here that you also want to define in your test, the threshold. If your hypothesis was true or false. In our case, we said we are right if, with our hypothesis, if the conversion rate of this course is at least as good, at least as big, at least as high as the conversion rate that we had for our last course that sold at $500, the business model generation course. So here we have it, a great tool to structure your testing, to structure your experiments, to figure out if your beliefs, the things that have to be true for your idea to work, actually are true in reality. Okay, great. Um few concepts here. One, uh, at Bedger College, we teach that you can use this concept to validate whether something's a problem or not, um, because uh, you can use the same test to see like, okay, is this a legit problem? You, you guys can short step this. That's what's, good. That's what's good. You're actually just testing whether your solution actually solves the problem. Like that's, that's what you're, like we believe that. It's essentially like you're pre-filling here and saying like whatever your MVP is, like we believe this minimal little thing that we're going to produce in a week is going to help X, Y, Z. And so that's where you say to verify that. And ideally, like, you know, on the, on the low end, you're going to say to verify that we're going to, we're going to get feedback from our stakeholder, right? Like that's on the lowest end. On the highest end, it's like to verify this, we're going to pass, pass our product over on Monday and, you know, X, Y, Z company is going to use it. Here's where you stay accountable and to measure so this is, how are you going to measure success? So if I, if I give a company a tool to use, how do I measure success? So let's just go back to the dirt example. So if I had a, you know, I believe my XYZ service is going to help them save money on dirt removal to verify that I'm going to give them the tool on Monday and let them test for three days. And I'm going to measure how much money they saved moving dirt, right? So if your problem is pain, then you should be probably met or excuse me, if your problem is like hours, uh, then you need to measure how many hours you saved. If it's money, then you need to me measure how much money you saved. If it's, uh, you know, the, for the legacy knowledge, if it's somehow like you got to figure out how to measure, like, did you actually, did they actually retain the knowledge or not? And if we are right, so here's the kicker is like, if you're right, then, you know, X amount. So if I'm right, so I'm going to measure how much we saved. And if we're right, we're, we're going to save them 30% in hours. We're going to save them 20% in costs. We're going to uh, increase their knowledge retention by 25%.
This is what we want to hear. The winning teams, once again, will have this data because once you get me get through the problem, so the, the way this flow is going to work, we talked about, hi, my name is Ryan. Here's the, you know, here's the background and problem. Here's our solution. Here's how our solution is going to solve, you know, how, here's how our solution solves a problem. And we went ahead and tested this. So tomorrow we'll go over how this MVP would look in the slide deck. But essentially you're going to say, and here's what we did. This, this was our first MVP product and we put it out there and this is what we measured and this is what happened. So essentially just return report on the, like what actually, what actually happened. 